This dough will soon be transformed into the ugliest noodle in the world. Or at least that's what locals here in the village of Bantul in Indonesia call them. Mi letak means ugly or dull noodles, mostly because of their gray color when cooked. This is one of the only two factories in the world that still make them using methods that can be traced back more than 2,000 years. And there's nothing simple about how they're made. It takes days of grinding, stomping, cooking, and drying. And if the factory doesn't sell them all in 10 days, it could lose a whole batch. So what makes these noodles so special? We visited the Mi Lotok Zap Pusur Pana factory to see how this family business is still standing. The cassava root that gives the noodles their color and taste is also toxic when eaten raw. So the flour needs to be soaked for two days. The flour is then ground beneath a large stone for about an hour. It's so heavy, it needs to be pulled by an ox. Every few minutes, workers scrape it clean of any sticky flour, while Sally Jo continues to shovel the flour into the path of the stone. He also adds water to the mix to get the right consistency. At 70 years old, he is a master, well accustomed to the physical demands of the job. He presses down with his feet to firm up the dough. He can feel when it's ready. It should be strong and not fall apart. When it hardens, he cuts the dough into 8-inch cubes with a special knife called a sabit. He then places them on a 2 by 3 foot bamboo tray. As with most tools, workers make them by hand. The trays are heavy, and with a little help, Salijo puts them in a steam oven. After 90 minutes, they start to look for signs the dough is ready. While it's in the oven, the dough rises, but it's still not ready for shaping into noodles. It needs to go back to be ground one more time. The factory has three oxen. They are old, so while one works, the other two rest. Mukido oversees the whole process, making sure the dough doesn't fall apart. He's been working here for 20 years. The factory opened here in the small town of Bantul in the 1970s, providing jobs to a community otherwise dominated by farming. Salijo has been at the factory for 10 years. He collects the ground dough into bags, each weighing 40 pounds. Finally, it's time to shape the noodles. This is the only step that isn't done by hand. Each lump of dough is enough to make 100 noodles, with each string around two feet long. This machine was brought in 20 years ago, but it often breaks, bringing production to a halt. Workers spread the noodles on bamboo trays and make sure they aren't tangled. The noodles cook in the oven again for about one hour. The doors don't seal properly, so workers use rags to plug any gaps. 
and stop the steam from escaping. Then they're hung to cool for two hours. Each batch makes around one ton of noodles. In the morning, workers separate them by hand into portion sizes. Workers lay the noodles on large bamboo trays. The factory has a hundred of them, and each one can be filled with up to 45 portions. The drying process takes about a day, but if it rains or it's too humid, there's a risk the whole batch could be ruined. So someone always has to be on watch. That's because the noodles have no preservatives. So if they don't dry fast enough, they could go bad. Judy Murianto inherited this factory from his uncle 23 years ago. Anaknya tidak bisa meneruskan saya Chinese settlers and traders likely brought noodles to Indonesia back in 2000 BC, and with them came many of their methods. Locals here say the first noodle factory in Bantul was opened in the 1940s by a Muslim preacher from Yemen. They started making them with cassava because his wife, a Chinese migrant, noticed it was abundant in the region. But the rapid rise of mass-produced instant noodles in the 1970s pushed traditional manufacturers out of the market. Today, Indonesia is one of the largest producers and consumers of instant noodles. Judy's factory is one of just two left in the country that make mi letek the traditional way. Once the noodles are dry, workers pack them into 10-pound bags. Each one will sell for around $5. That's half the price of Indomie, Indonesia's most popular brand of instant noodles. Buyers like Dalia come directly to the factory to select bundles of noodles to sell at the market. The broken strands are reused in the dough or fed to the oxen. The Bantul district has become well known for its noodles. They're even fit for a president. Barack Obama tried Miletuk during a visit to the region in 2017. Chef Harianto is one of the oldest Miletek vendors in the area. His father started the business before Harianto was born. And he still follows the same recipes today, cooking the noodles in chicken broth with vegetables. Harianto uses the same charcoal stove his father used. He says it gives a powerful aroma and better taste. The noodles are chewy in texture and plain in taste. Almost all of Harioto's customers are local. Despite costing half the price, Milete can't compete with the big instant noodle manufacturers in Indonesia. And Judy isn't sure how long he'll be able to keep his business, one of just two remaining in the country, alive.
His children have moved to larger cities and have little interest in taking on the business. I could got to go about what I want to learn, but I got to go. Lakwis, lakwis, rap. Yeah? Sangka asik nih, lemai kali kalau ngombak gitu. Dibicara kayak lemah ngombak rasanya. Arsiko ya, ya. kalau orang Jawa arsiko. Itu ya. dalam benak saya berlomba, sebisa berlomba. Mana yang kualitasnya gitu. Meanwhile, Mukiro is more upbeat about the future. Dekat dan saya sudah suka kerja di sini. Misalnya masih kuat, kuat di sini ya. Ya, ini kan masih ada yang muda-muda. Kan di sini ya juga muda-muda ya juga ada yang banyak lah. Kemungkinan yang bisa meneruskan sejarah di sini. Nah, karena minyak tidak sama mie lain-lainnya itu. 